I'm HIV positive. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've been HIV positive since uh, 2013. Why does your hair look like this, man? You're actually the brother of uh, one of the club owners here in Atlanta. Yeah, one of the popular clubs in Atlanta. Yeah, what's the name of the club? The Royal Peacock. Get the f on. I don't want to talk to you like no, that. No, I'm just saying, bro. Get the hell oh, on. Shit, on camera, bro. Okay, no, I won't. How much you want to bro? How much you want to bet? When I found out that you could sell your body for drugs, I started doing that. What? Yeah. So, so wait, that was here in Atlanta? Yes, sir. What age are we talking about? 19. You were selling your body to who? To men. <laughs> what? Yeah. If your brother would have happened to come across this video um, and see this on YouTube, what do you think his thoughts and his reactions are going to be? See, I'm real sensitive about my brother, man. Because I'm, I'm supposed to be with him. Have you penetrated? Yes, I've actually uh, made a video uh, called Thug Bait. I don't know if you ever heard of you that. You say it's called what? Thug Bait. Thug Bait? Yeah, a guy would pick you up. He would, he would pick you up on it. I would have to wear this... Uh, so this is like a, a, a corn video? Yeah, for, for, for gays. Didn't Oof. know it was gonna go viral like that. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't, you, you would think, why is the drug dealers watching gay videos? Right, <laughs> right, hold on, hold on. That's a good question. If he's watching this right now, what message do you have for him? I need you, man. I need you. What's up, YouTube? Guys, if you know anything about this channel, you know it gets hot in the summertime. And things are heating up. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification bell. And stay tapped in. in. Something tells me it's gonna be a hot summer. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got my man out here today. How you doing today, man? I'm doing fine. All right, all right. So y'all pulled up, man, and are you homeless? Yes, I am. Okay, how old are you? I'm 48. 48? And so you was telling me that you're actually the brother of uh, one of the club owners here in Atlanta. Yeah, one of the popular clubs in Atlanta. Yeah, what's the name of the club? The Royal Peacock. Yeah, man. Like, and I was just. <laughs> those are really popular clubs, man. And I was. Shout out to the Royal Peacock, man. I was just at the Peacock uh, for T's birthday a couple months ago. So anyway, all right. So why are you out here homeless if you're the brother of a, a, a club owner? Well, when I got out of prison, uh, I guess my brother said he's tired. Um, when I got out of prison, I had got my GED. And uh, that was my opportunity because I told him, I said, I said, look, man, I need to stay with you because he's, he's my inspiration. He, he, sometimes you got to find something more vile of yourself. And he's it. So I, I asked him, I said, can, can I stay with you? He's like, no, you can't stay with me because I got a lot going on with the club and interviews and stuff like that. I said, all right, cool. So just give me $20, I'm gonna shoot the Trinity, that way I can I have a place to stay and I can have, get my mind together, my thoughts on what, what's my next move. So then he said, all right, fuck it. He said, all right, I got you. So about 10 minutes later, he said, all right, fuck it, go help Bachi in the kitchen, rearrange the kitchen, because I'm gonna start opening up the M bar for brunch. So I took that as a clue that he was gonna give me a jam. So I busted my ass, I got the club ready, I got put stuff in order, I'm real good with cleaning up and putting stuff in place. He right. knows it. I cleaned the fryers out, the, whoever he leased the fryers, the, the, the restaurant to last time, clogged up his fryers, didn't give a fuck about the restaurant. Right. So anyway, I did all that work. So at, when we was finished with the club, the Peacock was open that night, it was a Friday, I'll never forget, March 22nd. And uh, so I go up to the edge, back and down, and I'm joining the club. I'm thinking I'm going home with my brother. So at the end of the night, the club is the club is over. Peacock closes. He comes to me and says, "All right, so where are you going?" And I lost all hope. How long ago was that? March 22nd. That was just this March 22nd. Yes, yes sir. Oh, that was just like uh, a couple months Two ago. Two months ago, I got out of prison. March 22nd. I was supposed to get out September 8th, but I got my GED. How long did you do in prison? I did 18 months. They knocked off six months because uh, because of my GED. What was you in prison for? Uh, they used to call me the Midtown, the serial Midtown burglar. So basically, I, I, I would go to these apartment buildings and I would take the TVs off the walls in the leasing office and the tools out of the maintenance room. I wouldn't break in nobody's house. I just would get a quick, quick, uh, quick know, hustle. Look, yeah. Right, right. And I bring it to the dope man. And it's in the same area where I'm in now. And guess who told them? The dope man. The dope man told yeah, on you? The same people I just hold my stuff to is the same people because they told on me. Because How do you know they told on you? Because 
when we went to go, well, I, had, I had some credit cards that I that I had burglarized, and and we went to Home Depot. I had a commercial Home Depot credit card, and you know what that means? You could go back and forth and get big stuff. Right. You spend four or five hundred at one time. Right. So this dumbass dude, he and he's up here now. He uh he go we go to Home Depot. First he gets a car, a car wash. Okay, on one of the credit cards. So then we go to Home Depot. Instead of him hiding the, the license tag, he parks it right there in the, in, in, in the front where everybody can see the license tag. Right. So they contacted him first. And, 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 and then he snitched on you, another. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It led to me. And then I called I call the detective, and I was like, you know, hey, it was my, it was me. You know what I'm saying? And he had nothing to do with it. And that's how I got the, eight, the, 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 the 18 you called the detec- You called the detective and told on yourself? I told him myself, yeah, because I thought he was lying because he owed me money. The drug dealer owed me money. So the drug dealer owed you money? <laughs> he owed me money from... That's not how that normally works. Right, exactly. But he owed me money from previously the, the, the lawnmowers and stuff that we went we, we got. He didn't give me all my money. So I'm thinking, okay, he lying. He, he don't he don't want to pay me my money. So I said, give me the detective's number. I'm going to call him. So, he, so the detective never answered. I just left a message. So one day I'm up in the park, and this same drug dealer came around, and he, get, he gives me a piece of dope. Now, no, normally I get stuck for a minute where I'm at. When and I we're talking high. about crack, right? Yeah, crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I get stuck. I, st- I get stuck a minute and I look around my surroundings. So real quick, so I b- sell stuff. Before we get into that, okay. right? Let's just let's just. Okay, first of all, do you have any kids? Yes, I do. How many? I got four. Four kids? Yes, sir. Um, how old? My oldest is uh, he'll be 29 in July. Then I got uh, 19. Then I got Jamori is. 14 and then I got Madison who's nine. Okay, okay. So you got um you got two that are minors. Yeah. Okay. Um and one that just you know just became an adult, right? Right. Um and so you know, I mean, are you like active and present in yeah, their life? My son, my son, yeah, he cash apps me sometimes. Um, you know, money to get groceries if I'm hungry. Or he might cash app a restaurant. He lives in Gwinnett. Which, which son? Which son? The one that's the how old? The 20, yeah. He just had a... The 29-year-old? You know, the 29-year-old. Yeah, okay. I'm a grandfather. He just had a child, but... Okay, but so why... All right. All right, so... I think... Get the monkey off my back. Okay, because I was about to say, man, I mean, so let's... And by the way, we have four kids. How many different moms? Or is it one mom? No, all of them different moms. All of them different moms. Okay. Okay. Um, Are you like... So, the fact that he's sending you money, that's what I'm saying. Like, are you... Were you active and present in their life or not so much? Are you kind of like a no, deadbeat? Not, yeah, I'm kind of, I mean, you might as well call it what it is. Yeah, I'm deadbeat. You're a deadbeat, okay. But so, me and my son, yeah, we, 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 we... Talk and converse and have maybe a, yeah, well, somewhat since, of a relationship. Yeah, we, we have a we have a outstanding open relationship. Okay. I mean, we talk. We, we Definitely we a live, good thing. We live together, you know. Uh, he lives You're talking about the oldest one, right? Clean. Yeah, he lived I with me it. when he got out of job corps. When okay. he graduated job corps. And that's when I was clean, but uh. So yeah, so okay, so you got four kids. Ever been married? Yes, sir. Um, how many times? Once. Once. Yeah. Um, how old were you when you got married? I was 28. 28, and did you get divorced? Or are you still legally married? No, I'm not legally married. <laughs> okay. Um, how old were you when you got divorced? I was uh. 28. <laughs> okay. So how long did that marriage last? It's about eight months. Eight months? Yeah. Just, <laughs> Why did it last only eight months? Because uh, she found out, she was in love with me, and she found out that I got high after the fact. So she didn't high. know that you was she uh, didn't know I was smoking. High, okay, right? okay, okay, okay. How I did you hide job, that? I kept the job, because I kept the job, and I paid my, my, my one check. Yeah, yeah, but she didn't notice when you would, like, be high sometimes? No, because I don't look like that. I don't normally look like this. Okay. I look now. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Okay, okay, okay. So she divorced you after Actually, finding that yeah, out? she did a good job. She did an excellent job divorcing me. Because uh, I remember one day we, we, we were at the house having sex. And uh, she said she had to go somewhere to go do some things and, and run some errands. Because I was real tired from running the street. So we had sex and I went to sleep. And she said she had to go run some errands. And in the whole meantime, she was going to file for divorce. She was abandonment. I was on drugs. Hmm. So, so she to- gave you something right before she went to file. Right. Was it good? <laughs> oh, it was that. Yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. All right. So... Okay, okay. So let's just start from the beginning real quick. So where are you from? I'm from New York, actually. You're from New York? (laughs) What part of New York, man? Brooklyn. You're from Brooklyn, BK, man. Shout out that Brooklyn, man. 
Shout out that city in New York all day. Yes, sir. All right, and so growing up in Brooklyn, did you have both mom and dad in the household? Well, yeah, I mean, my, my dad, he, uh, he adopted. I was adopted, first of all. Okay. My first name, my real name was Charles Edward Hayden. Um, back then, they couldn't have mixed children. My mom was a heroin addict, and my dad was a black Jam uh, Jamaican weed smoker. Okay. So uh, they couldn't they, they couldn't take care of back the interracial. They didn't want interracial relationships back then. Right, right. So the person who adopted me, Alfredo Bellamy, and Nell De Nunez, they adopted me, and my father came to Florida. When, when they divorced, my mom, the adopted mom, took mm -hmm. me to Florida. Okay. So my doctor, my doctor dad remarried to another woman, Marlene Gordon. Okay. And he came to Florida and kidnapped me because my father wanted how to. Were, how were you then? When he kidnapped me, I was yeah. maybe six, five. Okay, five or six. I, so. remember the, I remember the day. I can never forget. He said, he said, in a few minutes, I want you to go to the bathroom, change clothes, and run to this great car that's parked outside. And I did just that, and we jumped on the plane and went to... um. Went to uh, New York. Okay, okay. So I was getting in trouble in New York because I was bad. Um, uh, we, he, 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 he took a, he, my dad took a transfer to Puerto Rico because he works for the federal government. My mom retired out of that building 37 years. IRS. Hold on real quick. Hey, Ashley. Ashley. No? You, you say what? No, no, that ain't it. I was trying to get her for, for an interview. Yeah, Let me get that shot, give you a dollar. Get the fuck on, bro. Get the fuck on. I don't want to talk to you. No, I'm just saying, bro. Get the hell on. No, I won't. How much you want to bet, bro? How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet? Bye. Bye. I'm going to pay you a dollar for a fucking ticket. I'm going to get a bill. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, you did. Yeah, right. I don't fight there. Don't fight me. That would have been prayer if I slapped the <laughs> shit out of him on camera, right? I but mean, anyway, I'm saying, I mean he did try to he did try to uh, hit your side of the head for, the, yeah, on, for the two dollars for a short. That's too. how the yeah. this, this is what I go through. Let me tell y'all. But hold on, let's let's do it because right. because this is this is street activity. This is J activity, right? Exactly. This is the type of stuff that happens, right? Exactly. So let's let's talk about how we got there. Okay, right. so okay, so so bottom line is that you 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 you. You know, sounds like kind of grew up, kind of with your dad, with your mom. My, yeah, and well, well, no, no, my dad was in Puerto Rico when when he kid when he kidnapped me. He took a job at the IRS, and I stole his secretary's car at twelve. This was in New York. No, this was in Puerto Rico. So how how did y'all get to Puerto Rico? He took. He, he, you say he was getting they, trouble they in New decision, York. They made a decision uh -huh. that, that it would be a better life if we moved from New York. Okay, they didn't want so us to be raised up in. The, I in, get it in the big city, in the right? Big the city. big concrete jungle. Right. Right, so they so, move you to Puerto Rico. Moves to Puerto Rico, me and my brother. You say at twelve you stole your secretary. I mean, he said he was cheating, he was cheating on my mom, my, okay, my, my stepmom. Right, and I told her. You so, told your stepmom your dad was cheating? Yeah, because <laughs> she's the only one that I wouldn't have got clothes if it wasn't for her. Okay, so she, right, so she was she had your back. So so anyway, I wrecked the secretary's car. So my dad was in New York when I did this. He was in New York doing on business. Right, I snuck through his little window in the room. Took the keys, went joyride, and wrecked the car. Wrecked the car. Go ahead. So that day, um, he beat the shit out of me. I mean, literally, he said, "Go get my teeth." Well, what do you mean that day? You mean whenever he got back, right? When he got back. Okay. Yeah, I, I made up some lie saying somebody broke in the house. Long story short is that he beat the, the s out of and you. He put his gun to my head. Wow. Okay. And he said, "I kid." And I said, "Dad, I'll never forget his chain, shark tooth was hanging over my head." And I said, "Dad, please don't kill me." So then I thought about it and I wrote him a letter. I said, "If you ever touch me again, I kill." You. And he sent me off to Marlene, the stepmom here in Georgia. And I've been here ever since. And okay. She took care of me. I went to school. What the, out of school. The, the stepmom or you mean the, the adopted mom? No, the stepmom. The stepmom took care of me. She was my mother. So wait, she the stepmom that you live with in Puerto Rico? Yes. She's the one, the one of my dad she Okay, was. okay, okay, okay. Okay, I got it. I, I wouldn't got have it. got nothing if it wasn't for her. So she, she raised you after that? Yes. Okay. 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 So you kind of had a checkered upbringing for sure. Yeah. Um, what was the first days that you did crack? Well, there was a guy named Rockman. He's like, he's he's from uh, New York too, but he, he, so let's just start with the age first, and then you could tell the story. All right. Uh, I was in school. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was. I was, I was, I was sixteen. Sixteen. I was selling crack in the, on uh, Ashby Street. Okay. And um, 
So you was out here in Atlanta right. sell, sell, selling dope and so. He was giving me the bombs. Right. Real big time drug dealer now. And so what made you decide to do this? I got, I was wondering what it, what the feeling was, messing with women. Oh, I want some head while I hit. And that's I used to take the bomb and smoke the bomb up with the crew, pay the junkies rocks not to tell them, not to tell the truth. I would scratch myself up with vines and shit, make it like, seem like I was running from the red dog. Wait, wait, say say this again now. <laughs> say this again. I would get the bomb. Okay. Give me the bomb. Okay. And I would pay the junkies not to say that I'm smoking, not to tell them that I'm smoking. Okay, okay. And then I was, so I was in this house. With so cabins, you would pay them with, with rocks? With, with rocks, but I <laughs> with the bomb. Right. Then I'll make up some story when it's time to... When you come Say to that you got money. snatched up, so you was running off. You right. was running off with the plug. Right. So I running I, off. I, I began, I began <laughs> to off realize the that lies. <laughs> of course, you's about to get messed up, man. I'm surprised you're not dead. True. Okay. So, okay. But what I'm saying is, what what convinced you to to smoke crack the first time? Well, it was raining, and uh, it was the money was slow. It was slow. And I said, let me try this shit. Why? I don't know. I I, don't, I, don't, I thought it was a sexual high. Ooh. Man, yeah, do, do you fun. regret doing that? No. And, uh, no? I mean, yes, yes, I do regret. Because uh, <laughs> the to moral say. of the story to the end is... Because, uh, like, why does your hair look like this, man? Well, as you see, I, I, uh, I, know, I know some white people in Midtown. And when they move out, I get a lot of their stuff. And I sell it instead of panhandling. But there's more to that story. When I found out that you could sell your body for drugs, I started doing that. What? Yeah. So, so wait, that was here in Atlanta? Yes, sir. What age are we talking about? 19. You were selling your body to who? To men. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, shit. So, so wait. In the process of that. So, was this like on the street type deal? Yeah, it was. Uh, they would just pull up and. Out, when I found out in the, in the gay area that, you know, that you could get money for, for, for whatever, motherfuckers used to pull up. Before I even, they used to pull up and say, yo, you look good, and I, uh, I'd move on. How much money would they give you? $40, $20. To do what? Get some head, want to suck my dick, whatever the case may be. Okay, so basically, they would do oral on you. Would they ever want you to do anything to them, or? At that time, at that time, I never, I never, never, never was, yeah, I was never interested in that. But as the, as the addiction grew, yes, I had, I've had, I've had to do oral sex before. Not to say that I have. I'm proud of it. But yes, I have I have done it before. Um, what were the circumstances that caused you to do that? Was that just drugs. you just oh, so you just wanted to hit and I wanted, I wanted some dope. That's what, I wanted and, some a, and and wow. Yeah. I mean, have you have you been penetrated as well? No, 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 never been penetrated to this day. They still I've offered me plenty of money, and I, I don't know. I haven't been penetrated. Have you penetrated? Yes, I've actually uh, made a video uh, called Thug Bait. I don't know if you ever heard of you that. You say it's called what? Thug Bait. Thug bait? Yeah, a guy would pick you up. He would, he would pick you up on it. I would have to wear this. Uh, so this is like a, a, a corn video? Yeah, for, for, for gays. What? So the, the, he would, he, it, it was pre planned. He would pick me up on the corner and say, Yo, I want you to, to come to the hotel and fuck this bitch. I'm like, Okay, cool. But I'm a blindfold. I'm like, Okay, the whole time I know it's a man sucking my dick. Right. So I'm blindfolded in the hotel and he's sucking my dick. And I'm like, Oh, this is good. So then I take the blindfold off and realize it's a man, and then I throw a tantrum. But then I continue this. Order. And this is all like pre pre planned or whatever. Pre planned, right? What? So, um, yeah. That's a, <laughs> I almost didn't do this interview, y'all. Okay, so okay. I mean, honesty is what you want. No, a hundred percent. That's I mean, I'm just shocked, honestly. In the process like, of that, um, that's why they say men in the closet because I'm HIV positive. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've been aging out of closet since uh, 2013. Ooh. But I'm all right. Um, was that from the gay sex? No. It came from me fucking a girl that was fucking with a dude that was fucking with men. And actually, the whole area, drug dealers knew that the girl was HIV positive and they thought that I knew already and I didn't. So that's how I became HIV positive. It was my <laughs> fault. Um, Mm. That's basically it. Um, the key to HIV is staying undetectable. Making sure you take your medicine. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I, 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 right now, I, I, I was undetectable. 
but these homeless people keep taking my medication. Uh, I fall asleep and they think it's something in my bag that's worth money. They find out that uh, they got my medication. And I think that I think they're selling it to the Africans. I'm not sure, but that's what I heard. Oof. But uh, man, this is rough, man. So I be, because okay, but you still didn't explain why your hair looks like that. Okay, so as as I can say, I, I was buying some. Uh, I get stuff from the white people, and I sell it. So it was some clippers, and I decided to cut my hair. But the clippers was biting my head because it was not. They were, they were old. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Shit, I'll do this. I, I, I'll do this later." Because I had money in my pocket and I wanted it hit. I said, I'll just finish it later. I never got to it because somebody ended up stealing my clippers. They go on my shit when I... I get it. So basically you started and then somebody stole the clippers because in between you wanted to take a hit. Right. Oof, boy, that addiction, man. That addiction, so that... that wow. That is... I'm, I'm shocked. It's okay. Wow. Huh. <sighs> okay. Um, as far as like the homosexual activities, like, I don't are do you it. are you ashamed of that? Yeah, I'm ashamed. Of course, I'm ashamed. Man, of course, I'm ashamed that. of it. <laughs> My guy. Of course, I'm ashamed of it because I'm not attracted to men. A lot of drug dealers, they seen the video when they came out. They put it all. They put it, they put my business out all in the open. And I was like, look, how much did you get paid to do that video? What? Oh, 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 two hundred. So for two hundred bucks. Yeah. You sacrifice your dignity and reputation out here? Yeah, so, yep. And I didn't Oof. know it was gonna go viral like that. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't, you You would think, why is the drug dealers watching gay videos? Right, <laughs> right, hold on, hold on. That's a good question. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, okay, no, so, that's a good question. You know so, so you was thinking like. Why the fuck are you, why? Right, how like, how, ain't nobody gonna see this because. Right, because. Wow. Well, this, this is a gay video. Wow. <laughs> but come to fucking realize it, <laughs> some of these niggas fuck around too. Hey, man, listen, this is Atlanta, man. This is Atlanta, so the most thugged out dude would be the same dude that's taking it up to shoot. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. And so, and you know, it amazes me because these guys have been selling drugs for damn near 20 years. I've been out here 25 years, and these niggas ain't got shit. They still niggling down. But you ain't got shit, man. Yeah, so we all on the same boat. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? At least they didn't like fall into the same thing that you did, right? You never know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So they might be hitting a little something. They might be sneaking they a geek. Got, yeah, yeah, I believe so. A little so. sneaking geek. I believe so. Whew. Oh, man. All right, man. I heard all right. about the drag queens. The drag queens told me that. Yeah, some of the drug dealers pick them up on the block down there. Wow. Wow. I tell you what, man. I tell you what. So... If your brother would have happened to come across this video um, and see this on YouTube, what do you think his thoughts and his reactions are gonna be? See, I'm real sensitive about my brother, man. Cause I'm just I'm supposed to be with him. But everybody keeps saying you're a grown man, you're a grown man, that's his money. You gotta figure out your way, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I know when I'm with him, Shit gets ran right. The club is, is he knows that he can lead me there. And uh Yeah, but know. I mean if you're still in your addiction then but you're gonna be largely still unreliable. Like cause then yeah, when you're good and you're sober, you're a hard worker, everything's great, da da da. But then when you get high or when you feel that you need I to don't get show high. Up for work. That's the problem. Huh? I go missing. Right. So I mean how are you gonna circle that square? Yeah, you, you got all these emotions towards it. But then, which, which emotion is, is, is stronger? The emotion, the desire to want to get high, or the desire to want to, you know, make your brother proud and live a better life? Well, it's to live a better life. Um, well, but your actions have to show that. Right, my goal now, is, since I got my GED, is if you get your GED in anywhere in the state of Georgia from an institution, a uh, Department of Corrections, your schooling is free for certain places. Right. For certain jobs. Right. Like so now you want to write trade so, school. Right. right. I want to. I want to get my CDL. I've always wanted to drive a truck, and and it's hard. I can't do it right now because I have no place to stay. And I thought that was going to be my, my my my. Well, yeah, but I mean, nobody wants a crackhead living with. I understand that, but I wasn't a crackhead when I got out of prison. Well. And I can't blame him because he did give me a hundred dollars, and I could have rented a room for a week. And, and, and you went I and got the, some shit. I fought the urge too long, and, and, I, and I get, and I, I was weak. Right. So I mean, he, from his perspective, so okay, I understand his perspective. All right. Are y'all blood brothers? 
No, but he's... So y'all are adopted brothers, yeah. right? We've been, we've, been, we've been together since I was five years old. Right, so that's your brother. I, in, in 100%. But man, like, what message do you have for him right now? Like, if he's watching this right now, what message do you have for him? I need you, man. I need you. Mm. I need you, man. Just, just for a little bit. Can't do it what what do you feel like is the path to victory? I don't know. Like you're saying that you need him. What do you need him to do? Come get me. Come get me, man. Just come get me out of here. Take me out of here. I promise you I won't come back. I, mean, I get it, man, but that's that's what they all say. And then they end up right back, man. So but I guess from your perspective, you just want him to try. Give it a shot. Because that's that's what, honestly what love is. You know? Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be a straight line up. So I, I get it, man. I get it, man. Well, listen. On that note, if anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Do what now? If I want what? Um, if, if, if anybody, if you want anybody to be able to reach out, uh, you know, give you words of encouragement, maybe donate. Like, do you have Instagram, Facebook, anything like that? I don't have none of that. I don't have no phone. Do you have Cash App? I don't have that. Nothing? Nah, but uh, send it to my man. And, 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 What's your I'm name, brother? Chris Bellamy. All send right, it to man. him. And, uh, Bellamy. If, if he can't find me, that's probably help, a good help thing. Somebody, help somebody if, else. If I can't find you, that's probably a good thing. Help Hopefully, somebody. that means your brother came and got you. All right, I'm going to go to the Peacock. Um, Maybe this weekend or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, I see you, man. Okay. Yeah, but if you if, if anybody sends anything, send it to my man right here, Cash App, and he he definitely helps somebody yeah, else. I make sure that it gets for food though. I make sure it gets to you, man. I make sure it gets to you. Don't worry about that. Um, what's your brother's name, man? Damian Gordon. Damian. Okay. Okay. All right, man. Well, listen. Like I say, man, we really appreciate you. Definitely wishing that but the best. All right. Yeah. Make sure you have a good one, man. All right. Love All right. you, man.